Welcome back. My name's Dustin Kreis, and we're going to do something a bit different tonight. But before we get into what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to talk to you for a second because I am going to forego the coming attractions video that I typed in the description um, for my Mass Effect 3 thing because the end of my Mass Effect 3 video got cut off and uh, it just ended with me cursing. So uh, I forgot, to, I didn't get to do my outro and you know, usually I end it by you know, talking about stuff that I'm going to be um, coming up with in later episodes. I think I'm going to stop that entirely because uh, I just, sometimes I never get around the things and it's just best not to say, sometimes it's best to leave things unsaid. But uh, I'm not going to do the coming attractions video because, uh, especially with one thing, I think a lot of people, um, it, it's kind of becoming a big thing now, a, a, a big uh, sort of phenomenon. And um, I don't want people like beating down my door to hear my thoughts on it. Um, I kind of want to surprise you with it. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm, <laughs> I realized what I was just saying there kind of sounded a bit um, big-headed and big-egoed. Like you guys are just feverishly awaiting my next video. Um, that's not the case. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to forgo that and I'm just going to do the videos as they come and I'm going to stop talking about what I'm going to be doing because sometimes I don't get around to doing them. So, but anyway, tonight, like I said, we're going to do something a bit different. Instead of talking about a video game, we're going to talk about a movie. And uh, I, I did one of these videos kind of way back in the day uh, about the Scream series. It was around Halloween time and Scream 4 just came out and I did a little video on the Scream series. Um, it wasn't super popular. Uh, the, the video game stuff got more hits, so I didn't really return to movies, but I think I kind of do want to return to movies, you know, just a little bit here and there, it's just kind of as a palate cleanser, and, um, uh, you know, kind of keep things fresh. I don't want to, you know, talk about video games every video, so, uh, but today we're going to talk about a movie, and that movie is The Town That Was. Uh, this is a documentary from 2009. And just saying the word documentary, I probably lost half of you right there. But uh, this is a pretty fantastic piece of work. And uh, I really wanted to share this with you because, you know, a lot of my viewers are in the States and they probably know the story behind this documentary. But a lot of you guys that I talk to frequently are from outside the U.S. And you might not know the story of Centralia, Pennsylvania. And uh, I kind of want to share it with you because it is a crazy, crazy story. Uh... It's almost unbelievable when you uh, really get down to it. It's one of those things that you're like, that couldn't possibly have happened. But it did. And uh, crazy stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. And I'll talk a little bit about the movie. This probably won't be as long as a game discussion video. Hopefully it's not because my videos are getting too long. I really need to, you know, <laughs> really need to work on that. But uh, anyway, the movie is about the town of Centralia, Pennsylvania, which is located in the coal mining country you know, the, the big coal mining region in the United States. And uh, it's a sleepy little, t it was a sleepy little town, uh, about 1,600 people. And uh, basically what happened to this town was in 1962, right before uh, the, the Memorial Day festivities, uh, the town started a controlled fire of their, um, basically their landfill, their trash, where the, where the trash goes for the town, because it was located kind of close to one of the cemeteries, and they do their Memorial Day um, shindig uh, in one of the cemeteries. You know, they go there and they, they talk about, you know, the honored dead and all that stuff. So they wanted to get that trash kind of out of sight, out of mind, before, you know, everybody was in the cemetery and it wasn't a big eyesore. So they started a controlled fire of the... Uh, the trash there. Uh, unbeknownst to them, somehow this controlled trash fire got into a seam of anthracite coal. And anthracite coal is one of the most pure forms of coal out there. Um, it is really, really compressed and really pure, and it's really hard to ignite, but once you get it burning, it just goes and goes and goes. And um, Basically, what happened was this entire vein of coal ran underneath the town, and in the intervening uh, 20 years, you know, uh, 
from 62 to 83, which 83 was the big turning point for Centralia, um, basically this fire just burned underneath the town. And smoke would rise out of the ground, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of scare about carbon monoxide in houses. And in 1983, a big thing happens to the town. Uh, basically, the government says, you know what, this is getting a little dangerous in here. Um, there was a, there's a story about a kid who was playing in his grandmother's yard, and the ground collapsed underneath of him. He was luckily saved by his cousin. But because of that coal was burning underneath and it was no longer there, the ground collapsed in. And, uh, you know, like they say, it, it usually takes someone dying before government uh, steps in to solve a problem. So uh, the government came in and said, you know, we're going to start buying your guys' houses for fair value and give you some moving expenses if you guys want to move out of this town because we really need to deal with this problem. So instead of stopping the fire, which they tried to do and it was unsuccessful, and actually, they were literally days away from stopping the fire, and just through bureaucracy crap, um, the fire was allowed to spread. Um, they basically, the state started buying up properties, and they would buy up, you know, huge blocks, and they'd wait till the entire block was bought up because no one wants to live next to uh, an abandoned house when there's a fire underneath the ground. You know, and then they just demolish the entire block. So this town. Um, for, in 1962, had about 1,600 people in it. Um, you know, 1983, mass exodus. As it stands now, well, in the, in the time of the documentary, as it stood, there was about 10 people still living in Centralia. Uh, I think now the number's down to about seven. Um, and this, you know, it's not a big town, but when you see the images of this bustling, sort of little sleepy community, and then you see what's left which is basically just an open field with gridded streets and a few houses dotting the landscape. The church is still there, and all the cemeteries are still there, but other than that, it's barren. I mean, the grass and nature has reclaimed it, and it's just such a crazy thing to see. And uh, I really want to kind of take a trip out there. I mean, it's not like a ghost town like you would think. Um... The, the movie talks about it's not a ghost town. There's, there is no town. There's just a few houses there. And the movie really centers in on one resident who happens to be the youngest resident in the town. And uh, at the time, he was 34. So that was three years ago. So he's about 37 now. Um, and basically, he's trying his best to sort of maintain an appearance there. He's you know mowing all the, the blocks to keep them from growing over. Um, there's a green bench that was like sort of like one of the landmarks of the town. He's constantly repainting it. You know, Christmas time, he's putting up decorations that used to be in the town from, uh, you know, Christmas and stuff, putting them up on the, the telephone poles. Um, so that's what the, really the focus is on, is on this one guy, and he's, he's trying to hold on to this idea of a town. Because basically, all of the houses that are left are owned by the government through eminent domain and they can throw those people out anytime that they wish. So they're kind of waiting them out because a lot of the, the residents that live there still are older. But uh, eventually, eventually, what's left of Centralia will be wiped off the map and it will no longer be, a, a, it's not really legally considered a town now, but um, there will be nothing there and nothing to mark that there was once a vibrant community there and because of the failings of government, um, it was allowed to uh, be wiped off the map. It's really a kind of a sad movie, especially if you think back, especially if you've moved away from your hometown. Um, you know, there's kind of a, a Midwest mentality that you make fun of your hometown because you've moved on to bigger things, supposedly. Um, but when you really get down and think about it, you know, I make fun of my hometown all the time. But when it really gets down to it, if my hometown was wiped off the map and I didn't have anywhere to go and anywhere to like, see the landmarks and remember things, I, I would feel really upset about that. You know, it, It's a crazy, crazy story. And uh, I found this on Amazon for $15. Um, interesting, interestingly, uh, because I do, ha do a video game channel, how I got into this, the story of Centralia is actually from the movie version of Silent Hill 
which they changed the, the idea of the town a little bit to have it be a mining town in West Virginia. And they basically used the story of Centralia with the mine fire to explain why the town is abandoned in the movie. So once I found that out, I was like, I have to, I have to hear about this town. And I, I looked it up expecting to see a town like Silent Hill that's just, it was left standing, it's just vacant, you know. But what, when you really see what Centralia is now, it's just, it's almost more devastating because if the building still remained there, at least you would have an idea of what it was like. But since there's just nothing there, and it's so crazy because you see footage from a parade in 1962 and just how busy their main street was. And, um, and then you see another picture of it that was from present day when the uh, movie was filmed. And you almost get the feeling of the buildings being there. It's kind of like a phantom pain. You almost sense the buildings there. But there's just nothing. It's just grass, you know. Uh, the fire hydrants are still there. It's just so weird to see these streets that go, that go to nowhere. Um, so I definitely wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, definitely one of the best $15 I ever spent. Especially if you live in this region, which um, I live when my hometown was in southeastern Ohio. And that's kind of just on the, maybe a little bit beyond the cusp of coal mining country. And uh, like my, the farm I grew up on had a lot of reclaimed strip mine. So that's kind of what I grew up around was strip mining. But um, definitely in this, uh, you know, Midwest Appalachian, Appalachian, Appalachian uh, region, threw a little Appalachia at you there. Um, definitely in this region, coal mining and mining in general is a, is a big thing that's kind of, it's funny how it kind of seeps into our system. And, you know, I went to school. The town I lived in, the city I lived in, was about thirty-five to 40,000 people. But I didn't go to school in that town. I went to school in one of the outside towns because of where the school district lied. And the town I went to school at was literally about the same size of Centralia, Pennsylvania. So I understand what it's like to have these sort of small town, you know, close-knit communities and to just kind of watch it be destroyed is it just it blows my mind to think well what if Dresden Ohio was destroyed like that you know my, my home or my town where I went to school at you know what if it was completely just gone which I mean I haven't been there in years but you know the same thing you know you just then you would have nothing to go back to so definitely check out the town that was um, I'm gonna put a link to the trailer down in the description box so you guys can watch that and kind of get an idea for the film. I don't know if it uh, um, is out there to like watch on YouTube or anything. I, 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 do, I don't know. I, I definitely wanted to own a copy of the movie because I'm just, I mean, I've watched this two times and I'm just as, I, I, I want to watch it again. I mean, that's a, that's a testament of something. I mean, I, it's something that I'm really interested in, of course. But it's also a testament to kind of how good the documentary is. And it's only 71 minutes, so that's an hour and 11 minutes. So it's not that long. It has some okay bonus features. Like it has an extended interview with one of the, uh, basically the kid that fell into the her, his grandmother's yard that the sinkhole happened. You, you get an extended interview with him. Um, you get home movies from the Centennial in 1966, which is kind of cool because you actually get to see what the town looked like when it was alive. Uh, you get a real estate tour of Scranton because Scranton is kind of facing the same issue where because of the mines underneath the town, it's starting to have some problems with um, subsidence and things like that. Uh, a music video by the story of, which I don't, I didn't know what this band was, but they have a song called Centralia and it's, it uses footage from the movie. And uh, I'm actually kind of interested in looking more into uh, music by the story of. I think they're from Texas. If I remember correctly. And then a photo gallery. It's got the trailer. And it's got coming soon stuff from the Cine Evolve, Cine Evolved or Sin Evolve Studios who put this out. Which none of the other stuff really looked any good. Um, and there's also a... This is something I didn't touch on. There's also a highway interview with the PA State Representative Robert uh, Belafonte. And the, the, the significance of the the highway interview is there was actually a highway that went through Centralia and they had to reroute it because the fire underneath of it was like a few thousand degrees and it actually cracked and destroyed the the road 
and they had to basically close the road and reroute the entire highway because of the mine fire. So, I mean, it's just such a crazy story. And if you grew up in the Midwest, it's definitely something I, I recommend you uh, watch. Definitely if you live in the Appalachian region, because it's kind of, you know, this kind of stuff can happen to any of us because there was a lot of mining in our area and you just never know when these kind of things are going to happen. But it's just so hard to imagine, um, you know, this kind of stuff happening. And you know, I, I do have some faults with the movie. I do have to say, like, I think with the... The, the stringent focus on um, John Lacoitus, who is the guy that basically they, um, they follow around the young guy. Uh, on the one hand, I admire his spirit of wanting to stay in the town. But on the other hand, you kind of get the sense that like the destruction of his town was such like a psychological event. Like he just cannot move on from it. So on the one hand, I, I really feel for the guy. But on the other hand, the movie kind of makes me... Uh, feel like a little, you know, leery of him because you, you, I don't, I, it doesn't paint him as like a crazy person or anything, but you just kind of get the sense that, uh, you know, with how he's living in his grandparents' house and how he hasn't changed anything in it, you know, he's really trying to hold on to a past that no longer exists. And it, it's, on the one hand, it's really kind of inspiring to see him trying to hold on to this town, but on the other hand, you, you, it just feels weird in a way, so... That's my only real criticism of it, but definitely check it out. Uh, like I said, it's on Amazon. I think you can like rent it on YouTube, like for four bucks or something. But I'll definitely put uh, a um, link to the trailer down below so you guys can check out uh, the movie. I really like the music, which you get to hear the music in the um, the uh, the trailer. So I definitely enjoy this movie, and I think you guys would too. Definitely check it out. It's one of the craziest stories I ever heard. The only thing that it, you know, will, I, I don't want to say it comes close to it because actually it's a much bigger thing, but also like Chernobyl is kind of the same thing where it was government oversight and basically an entire, not even just a town, like an entire region of, you know, the Ukraine was just lost because of government oversight. So Europe definitely understands this. I mean, this is a lot smaller scale than Chernobyl was, but kind of in that same vein. So, um, there we go, guys. Another movie review. Uh, I definitely plan on doing another one. Uh, you know what? I, I gotta stop doing that. I gotta stop grabbing things and saying, this is what's coming up next. So, I definitely plan on doing another movie review here soon. Uh, we'll get to that eventually, uh, but uh, I'll probably get to some video game stuff. Get back into that, you know. My palate is cleansed now, so. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out the trailer. It's really, um, it's really a haunting, haunting movie in, in a lot of ways. Haunting documentary. Um, definitely check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.